how do you know the real skin from the callus? Well, the actual answer to this is that there is no real skin below. My real skin is this thick, waxy, yellow, hyperkeratinized skin. And it doesn't stop growing and it doesn't slough off like normal skin. So as you let it go, it gets thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker. To mitigate this and to help it slough off when it's dry, I will soak them and then scrape off the outer layer of the skin. And most people accept that that probably doesn't hurt. But when it gets super thick after several scrapings and it's starting to become a problem, I will come in and shave it off. But I'm not actually shaving it off. I'm just making it thin. Here's a cross section of skin. You can see on the left, epidermis, and below that with many layers, the dermis. And my epidermis is what grows super thick. So when I'm shaving, I'm just making it thinner. I'm not actually like taking anything off to get to anything below. Because if I went below the epidermis, I'd be shaving down to the dermal layer, the dermis, and that's where all the nerves and the blood flow is. So that's absolutely unacceptable. This is my foot three weeks after shaving, and you can see the cracks are still in the epidermis. They haven't split down into the under layer, the dermis where the blood flow is. And I will not come in with a shaving tool at that thickness because I would cut way too deep. But this is my foot after I let it go way too long, like three or four months while I was pregnant because I didn't want to deal with it. And this is what happens if you don't deal with it. It gets incredibly thick, but that is my skin. My skin just gets that thick, and so I have to come in and shave it off because otherwise it will get so dry and thick and hard that it'll split and that you'll have cracks. This is actually what a blister looks like on your foot. I had gone for a long walk and gotten a blister from my shoes, and what happens when you get a blister is the epidermis is separating from the dermis. So my entire epidermis here just popped off with the exception of a tiny bit of a low layer, and what was left was just a very thin protective covering like you have on your skin over the dermis. Your your epidermis is super thin. This is my foot uh, several summers ago when I let it go way too long again. And because I was walking around in sandals and the skin was so thick, it became very hard and dry and I got a bunch of cracks. And that is when the skin splits beyond the epidermis down into the dermis. And then you will have bleeding and pain because that's where the nerves in the blood are. But when I shave my feet, you can see that it's still a little yellow, and that's that's how I know how deep to go. It needs to be soft and flexible and thin, more like normal skin, but not so thin that it's completely gone, because I do need my epidermis to protect my dermis. So that yellowness is the keratinized epidermal layer that I have, and I've just cut it so thin that it behaves a lot more like normal skin. This is my foot a couple days ago. This is three weeks out from the last shave. And you can see how it's starting to build up, but it's still very flexible. These cracks are not at risk of cracking down below the epidermis into the dermis because the epidermis remains very flexible. But if I were to let it grow out for several months, it would start to look like that other picture I just showed you. And then there wouldn't be enough flexibility and those cracks would crack beyond the epidermis and go down into the dermis and begin to bleed and be very painful and a lot more difficult to repair. So to answer your question, when I'm shaving, I am not removing a callus to get down to normal skin. I am thinning my normal skin to the point where you see I clipped my toes a couple days ago, and that's why my toes in this video are so pink. And that's the thinnest I could possibly go. And on the larger surface of my foot, I don't even go that thin. I still leave it there because I need it.